Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Welcome to Ask the Messengers. I am Pastor Lester Lewis, your host. On today's show, we are going to be dealing with depression and substance abuse. In our studio today, we're going to be talking once again with real people sharing real stories, uh, but we're also going to get some real help uh, because there are many people who are struggling with depression. In fact, uh, many people don't even know that they are struggling with depression. And so with me today in studio, I have with me Chelsea Lipscomb. She is from Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. And she's going to share and talk about depression and the different types and also how it is treated. Also with me in the studio is uh, our very great friend of our, of our show, Ask the Messengers, Lauren Stovall from the National Council of Drug Dependency uh, and Against Drug Dependency and Alcoholism and, alcoholism and, drug, and drug Dependency. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, that NCADD, you got to you, you miss one of them Bs, you know, you was off if you miss one of them Bs. And then also we have with us to share her story, uh, Miss Viva Davis and she Viva. has a Viva Davis. I'm sorry, man, I was wrong. Right. me today man I man, my, my, my articulation ain't with me today that's all right but they are going to she's going to share her real story and I'm telling you it will absolutely change your life once you have heard it so listen let's get right into the show uh, Chelsea can you tell us what is depression depression is um, a mood disorder there's several different kinds but it's basically the feeling of prolonged sadness or anger you'll notice depression in people by um, loss or gain of appetite change in sleep patterns loss of uh, activities which they used to enjoy things of that nature okay you talked about the, there were different types of depression what are the different types of depression so that people will know there's uh, several different types of depression. There's um, bipolar depression, there's seasonal depression, there's uh, manic depressive, there's all different types. And then there's just basic depression. Okay, now now depression, most people think is just someone else struggles with it. Does it impact others when someone is struggling with depression? Oh, absolutely. It impacts everybody around you. Okay, now, uh, but is it treatable? That, that becomes the next question. Is depression treatable or am I just stuck with it? Every form of it is treatable. That's wonderful. Okay, now, so so how can someone get help if they're struggling with depression? The what, first what thing you need to do steps? is see a doctor. Okay. And they'll set, set you up with um, different types of behavioral therapy, depending on the type of depression or personality disorder that you're suffering with. Most of the time, you'll spend uh, time with counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists. You may be prescribed some medication. And they're also going to, hopefully, prescribe you some holistic-type activities activities okay. so, as well as medication. So how important is holistic activities along with those things? Is, is it important? In my opinion, it is very important. Things such as exercise or yoga to release the natural dopamine and serotonin in your brain, it's very important. So I just can't lay on the couch and think that depression is just going to leave. I wouldn't uh, advise you know. it. Definitely all right, not. All right. So listen, in, in your field of expertise, and, and very quickly, uh, is substance abuse connected with depression? Absolutely. Wow, wow. So uh, and so I, we also have with us with us uh, Lauren Stovall uh, and she's going to uh, kind of talk about because she has they have great programs uh, there. And, and Lauren, you can tell us everything about what you guys do um, regarding substance abuse, because we, we can see now that depression <coughs> and substance abuse are connected. And, 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 and you guys deal with that. How do you deal with that? Yeah, well, depression. So it's a form of a mental illness. And so when you also have a mental illness and we lean into substance abuse so we call that a dual diagnosis mm -hmm. um even a codependency um and so there's many things there's a my 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 strength is in prevention and so the way that um we have different programs and we operate these programs via different curriculums and what i love most about the curriculums that we use is that they are focused on two words healthy living living a healthy life and so the information that we share is really to we're treating the entire body yeah. we're yeah. treating the yeah. entire yeah. body so that's mind yeah. body spirit mm -hmm. um and i really think that 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 spiritual 
piece is so key because that depression really hits the spirit mm -hmm. and really hits the soul. And so when you're working from the inside, you know, we're we're building up and restoring that that internal that which is the root and the foundation and the core of who we are. Mm -hmm. So then you work on that inside and then everything else should should um you know, flow from there in a, in a healthy way. Now, Lauren, uh, I think this is a great question to, to ask right now because I know many people think that just adults struggle with depression. Yeah. Uh, are there also children who struggle with depression and, and have you know, some type of substance abuse issue because of that? Absolutely. I mean, I think I'm not that old and I struggled with depression um, <laughs> yeah. oh, a few years ago. Um, yeah. I think probably right at the pinnacle of my 30s. I mean, I'm 36. And so I think around like 28, 29, I was really in a, a depression really that started from stress and then led to a depression. And it really did impact my physicality. Um, and so you turn to something and we were talking earlier, earlier, excuse me, in the green room about how usually the turn to substance abuse has to do with trying to treat something and coat something and cover something up. Right, and right. so sometimes the, the depression or the substance abuse, I should say, is the overlay for the underlay and what might lie underneath is that depression. Right. So now, again, we, we're talking about all walks of life. It, it, it does not have any uh, uh, prejudice. So it, it, it hits older people, younger people, uh, those who have resources, those who don't have resources. Absolutely. And so uh, if, it, if it impacts everyone, then there has to be something in place. Now, you guys have programs. What kind of programs do you guys have yes. for those? So just like the curriculums I was talking about, um, our programs, uh, one of the programs that we use are called Celebrating Families mm. and then also Strengthening Families, two different curriculums. Um, but the the, again, the similar foundation is that they're all talking about living healthy. What do we do to live a healthy life? And so there's things that we need to do. We need to manage our mind. Uh, we need to manage our relationships. We need to manage how we think about ourselves. You know, um, so there's things that we can do in our curriculums. They are family based. Uh, so so it is reaching uh, everyone in the family. So so how important is it that you have a support system? in place. You can't just do this by yourself, correct? No, I don't think we can do anything by ourselves. Right. So um, I definitely think a belief in a higher power um, is key, a uh, belief in something. And then you have that belief in a higher power. And then you have that belief in yourself. We were talking about this in the green room. Uh, and so number one, that's a support right there. Um, but then, yes, you want to turn to people that you trust. Uh, and so that could be family and friends. All right. Well, listen, don't go anywhere. Ask the Message is going to be right back. And we are going to talk with Viva, Viva Davis. Viva, Viva Davis. God, my, my. <laughs> Y'all pray for Pastor Lewis. Y'all pray, pray for me. <laughs> Amen. We're going to talk with her. She's going to share her story when we come back. So don't go anywhere. Tell your friends and family. Tune in and call them right now. We're going to come back in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on WMYD Detroit TV 20. What was your drug of choice? Heroin. My addiction is opiates, heroin, and crack cocaine. Heroin. Basically, it was alcohol. My drug of choice ended up cocaine, crack cocaine. I am in recovery myself. 25 years. However, I got 25 years out there drinking up, smoking up, and shooting up. And my drug of choice was alcohol. Crack cocaine. Weed. Cross addicted. Crack. Blow. Liquor. Weed. You name it, I did it. Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse. Real people telling real stories. Every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on WMYD Detroit TV 20. Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. Here are their free February events coming up. Dialectical Behavior Therapy on Wednesdays. Spiritual Recovery and Yoga Classes on Thursdays. Physical and Nutritional Education Class on Fridays. And Narcan Training. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. Again, for more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at liverightstructuredcorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short, live right. Welcome, Judge Mathis. Thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well, thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life I was a resident 
of Wayne County. And so I'm here to help because Treasurer Shabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Take the first step towards staying in your home by going down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office on the fifth floor of the International Building in Greektown. Stop by today to learn more about our payment plan and especially the newly extended interest rate reduction program. Already in the payment plan? It's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks in Rite Aid stores and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. God's World, a Detroit institution that West Seven Mile and Schaefer says get them while they last. The Obama's 2017 commemorative calendar is going fast. Get your church supplies, communion cups, hide envelopes, Bibles, inspirational books by top authors. Call in your orders at 313-862-8220. Shop online at godsworldsuperstore.org. God's World, for all your inspirational needs. I'm coming in three months sober. 14 years clean. A year clean. I have 16 years clean. I'm Leroy Carey. I have 28 years clean. We invite you to come and be a part of any of our meetings that we have at our facility. The information is there on the screen. We have two weekly meetings, one on Wednesday, the other on Friday. We would be glad to have you, and with open arms, we will receive you. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. Again, I'm Pastor Lester Lewis, and I told you that we had a guest with us, Viva Davis. She is going to tell us about, listen, there's a story in the Bible about how uh, our Savior, he died, and three days later, he rose again with all power in his hand. I got somebody here who shares a story similar to the Savior. Viva, won't you tell us how you came back from the dead? Um, it had to be the grace of God. Um, I know that I was in a coma for three days. Every organ shut down. I was pretty much dead. The only thing was moving and alive was my heart. And it was because it was hooked up to a machine. Um, the whole time my eyes were closed, I saw light. Wow. I wow. thought the light was coming from the lights in my room. My family told me there was no lights on in my room. But, like, you close your eyes and look at the sun. That's what I saw. So now, let's go backwards just a little bit. We, we gave them the, the resurrection story, but let's tell them about how you ended up uh, dying. Uh, you were using a substance. Can you tell us about what you were using? Um, I wasn't using. Oh. I was breastfeeding. I had just had a baby. He was five months old. I'm a skater. I skate every Sunday night. Coming from skating, and I ran into a friend that I used to get high with. Arm Street didn't have no lights on it, so I asked him, could he drop me off at home? Instead, he flew past my street and took me to a spot. So in this place, he just kept offering and offering. I'm saying no, because I don't use. I've been clean for some months. You know, I'm, I feed my baby like that. Well, I eventually took a drink, and it was on. He wanted to do things to me that I didn't want him to. And before I knew it, while he was cussing me out, there was a lady shooting dope. There was one snorting dope, and this one just was on dope. So when it got to me... He passed me a stem that I had used prior because, like, when I drink, it's on. So I took it from him. This is must have been when he put the fentanyl in it. And I remember hitting it only one time, and I remember sliding over to unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. This man put in my pockets drugs. He put a stem up under me and left me on the back porch. Somebody called 911 and told him it was a dead body back there, and it was me. So, Viva, you're mm -hmm. saying that someone slipped it, he, he slipped it into so uh, your your drink or into something that you were you had and and that's how you ended up uh, overdosing and and eventually dying at that time. Yes, sir. Um, the hospital's registered now. From the time that it took the EMS to get to me, that had to be about five or six minutes. They couldn't start it, so the time from that back to the hospital, and they still argued because receiving wouldn't take me. They said if y'all bring her here, she for sure gonna die. Just try one time. They didn't want to. But they did, and one time my heart started and was pretty much still lifeless because not an organ in my body worked, not even my brain. Wow, what an wow. awesome story. But uh, let's do this. Let, let's take another step back and talk about how uh, you, you end up starting. How, how did you start? Because there are some people out there who, who they, they, this story is wonderful, but they need to also hear the, the beginning of it. How did you start 
using drugs? Um, I'm not going to say his name, but my oldest kid's father gave it to me. I couldn't have been no more than 20 or 21 years old after I had my first daughter. And it's been a battle on and off um, ever since then. She's 31, and I'm still battling it. Okay, now we also talked about you You continue, you were using at when you got depressed. And yeah. uh, Chelsea was talking about how depression can lead into uh, substance abuse. Uh, Chelsea, can you speak to, you know, uh, why, why is that, you know, we look for uh, the relief in other things when we're depressed? Absolutely, it's called self-medicating. Yes. And it's simple. When you don't feel good, you want to feel better. Any human on earth would look for something to feel better. And unfortunately, in our society today, it's so easy to take a drink, to take a pill, to take a hit. And it develops into a problem, absolutely, because you use it over and over to feel better. Okay. Lauren, uh, just, just very quickly, uh, now, what, in a person in her position, what would you recommend for them uh, as it relates to being, uh, getting into a, a program to, for recovery? Hmm. Well, again, like I said, so some of our program, most of our programs, the programs that I work with and facilitate, are again geared towards healthy living and i keep saying that because it's so important uh understanding that our health is so important and so you know my groups that i facilitate are a bit unorthodox we really get to the core and i really encourage people to get to the core like i said i'm a strong believer and i think viva believes this as well is that the substance is usually the overlay for what lies underneath. And so if we deal with that, that's the issue, the main issue that we need to deal with is what are we trying to cover up? Okay. Um, and I think, you know, I would encourage Viva to, to dig deep wow. and figure out what, you know, what are we covering up and deal with that? Wow, Lauren, that, that is that is profound. I, I need to use that in a sermon, the great cover up. You know, there's, there's many of us who are, are doing that. And, 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 and again, not just, you know, those who are in addiction, but those who uh, are are in, they're just in every normal day life. They're, they are covering up. Absolutely, pain myself and included. Issues. Absolutely. And, 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 and many of us, we are operating out of that pain. And, and what I found is that hurt people hurt people. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and, and so absolutely. They, they first hurt themselves, but they also hurt others. And then Listen, people who love yeah, themselves yeah. love others that's so right. it works both ways that's right listen don't go anywhere we're going to be right back and when we come back we're going to have uh, some words and some questions from our inbox that's right you the viewer can can send in your question to us and we'll answer it here on the air we'll be right back ask the messengers the program that deals with substance abuse real people telling real stories um, i've tried suicide because there were times that I didn't want to get high but didn't know how to stop. I could just remember walking up the street and just wanting to just run out in front of a bus. The fear of being judged because I had been judged all my life. Actually, I'm standing at the bus stop waiting on the bus to come up any street. And I just want to jump out in front of it. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the Office Manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2. Or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. After receiving a delinquent property tax bill for the two lots connected to my home, I was concerned. I didn't even know that I had a past due bill. I went down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office and the staff worked with me to keep my property out of foreclosure. My property taxes became delinquent after I fell behind on my bills. Treasurer Sabri and his staff came to the town hall in my city and provided information about resources available to help me. At the meeting, I found out about payment plan options. Let us help you. Our goal is zero owner-occupied properties getting foreclosed and going to the auction. Come down to our office at 400 Monroe in downtown Detroit on the fifth floor. Call 313-224-5990 during our normal business hours from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and until 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Or email textinfo at waynecounty.com for assistance. Take the first step. Contact our office today. It worked for us. 
Changing an addict's life and providing support to the addict's family is the goal of the Live Right Structure Recovery Corp. Here are their free February events coming up. Dialeptical Behavior Therapy on Wednesdays. Spiritual Recovery and Yoga Classes on Thursdays. Physical and Nutritional Education Class on Fridays. And Narcan Training. Live Right also accepts donations of cars, trucks, boats, and campers in any condition. Again, for more information and a complete list of their events, go to their website at LiveRightStructuredCorp.com or call 586-217-5899. Life short, live right. On today's show, we have been dealing with depression and substance abuse, and uh, we learned and found out that families are impacted by depression and substance abuse. And uh, many of our guests, who, uh, guests who are here today, uh, Lauren Stovall, she shared how it had impacted her life and the things that she went through. And uh, Viva talked about how uh, she, after uh, depression, would often go to use, and it, it impacted the way her family obviously uh, saw her in the hospital room uh, there, and then came back to life after three days of, of them saying that she wasn't going to live. And then uh, Chelsea shared her story of uh, how uh, she, uh, because of her mother, the things that she went through and uh, the thing that how her family was impacted and how uh, her roles as a child or caregiver to her younger siblings was kind of confused. Well, well, listen, all I'm saying to you is this, is that depression and substance abuse impacts families. Listen to these real stories about families and how they were impacted. How did your using affect your relationship with your family? Mm, well, I kind of don't speak to a brother now, and outside of that, um, I basically kept it in the closet. So the reason you don't speak to your brother now, is it due to your drug use? Yes, and plus he's a heroin addict himself. I have been totally estranged from all my family. I gave my family up for my drug, and not just my family, I gave up everything. What was your worst day of using like? What was my worst day? It's when I gave up my family for a drug. How did your using affect your relationship with your family? Um, it destroyed it. I mean, to the extent where, you know, they lose trust. They have lost their trust in me, you know. I mean, they, I mean, at this point right now, I just feel like, you know, if, uh, I got to walk this thing for a time period for them to be able to have any confidence in me. And I know that this is the case. Um, I've done quite a bit of damage. Trust has been lost and I have to earn that back and rebuild it back up. And I know it's possible, but that's the worst thing when you lose trust and your word is not enough anymore and you have to actually prove something to them through your actions. My relationship with my family is great now. My mom and my older sister and my older brother, I'm, I'm, I'm the baby and they're my biggest support system. I mean, my mom's always been there for me. It kind of tore us apart at first. They, they were shocked. They were dumbfounded that I was using heroin. And, uh, you know, but now it's like, you know, I mean, my family wants the best for me and I love them for that. They're in my corner and like, I, I know I can always go to them if I got a problem. Welcome back to Ask the Messengers. It is inbox time. It is time to answer the question that you sent in to us. This question comes directly from our Facebook family. So thank you so much for this question uh, from the inbox. Uh, someone from our Facebook family wants to know, how do you handle depression? Wow, that's that's a great question, especially for the topic we have today. And Viva, you said that you had you've been dealing with depression. How did you overcome? How do you deal with depression? Well, I um, found me a doctor because I didn't understand the emotional pain or the mental stress that I was going through. And I was subscribed to medication. And not only does it work, but it also works in my recovery and help me stay strong and keep me clean. All right, all right. Chelsea, how about you? In your field of expertise, how, how would someone handle depression? Just like Viva said, the first thing I would recommend is seeing a doctor. Absolutely. They can diagnose it. They can treat you with certain medications. Depending on your level of depression, I'd also recommend getting outdoors, doing some type of light walking, outdoor activities. It tends to calm you down and reconnect you with nature and Mother Earth. If you're an addict seeking um, solace from a uh, substance abuse, I would recommend AA and NA. There's also Celebrate Recovery, Refuge Recovery. There's all different types of angles, but getting out there and working with the community and having something to feel positive about when you hit, lay your head to the pillow at night, that's really the, the beginning of healing. All right. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, Lauren, you said that you had uh, struggled with depression in uh, not on, not in, in your uh, in, in the in, in not just recent, not, not like it was 5,000 years ago, mm -hmm. recent. Uh, how did you deal with depression? 
Yeah, so I would, you know, concur with uh, both of the ladies' sentiments. What I did was uh, I did seek um, assistance. I went to see a therapist, and I didn't even believe in therapy, and it was the best thing I could have did. Come on, and that's, um, and that, and that's not how, that's not how we, you know, us, us mm -mm, we, we, we don't, don't go do. to therapy. We don't tell folk our business. What now, are they know? gonna do for me? Uh, you crazy? That's what's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> you just crazy. You just gonna be crazy. No. Oh, so yeah. I went and saw there, uh, seeked uh, help from a therapist and it was lit she just she was amazing yeah. i no longer see her today but she helped me through that and gave me the tools one of the tools was i found out i am into nature so i mean exactly. these are things i didn't know about myself but she helped to bring that out of me um and then thirdly the to top it all off is i did have a spiritual awakening and so that spiritual awakening led me to to god and so what god did was let me know you know, child, I'm, you're not alone mm. and that I've been with you and mm. I'm still here with you. Mm. And so he helps me even through those moments that that those, you know, those thoughts, which they still might peak up every now and then. But because I have him and I have that love for him and because I know him as my father, then I'm, I'm all good. All right. Listen, and, you know, Pastor Lewis, I've always I, you know, the, the, these messages are so wonderful. And I want to share this thought with you in closing, just to let you know, the Bible talks about as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so what you think about, what, how, how you perceive yourself in your circumstance, that's eventually how you begin to operate your life. And it is very important. And it, it, these guests have given you some great examples and some great uh, help, some, some action points. And that's really it. We don't want to just tell you, oh, depression is real. We want to tell you, how do you overcome it? How do you, how do you, how do you get to the place to where you no longer are in uh, a place of depression? But now, like Lauren said, that you are loving you. And so that way you can love others and what you do. And so ask the message again. We just want to talk to those because, listen, depression is real and addictions are real and depression can lead to addictions. Mm -hmm. And so we want you to know that we're here for you. If you need any help, the information is there on the screen. Please, we advise you, we, we urge you, please contact us. We will point you in the right direction. We got some great programs with Lauren, her, her programs, and, and certainly if you're in the Macomb County area, Live Right Structure Recovery Corp, and we will help you to get to the place to where life is what it ought to be. And we want you to know that we want you to think the right thing so that you can live the right way. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers. And please help us to, to continue this, this programming on the air. We ask you to please help us, partner with us as we share this message. Share this message of hope and recovery to those who are struggling. Go to our website and there's great information, great resources, but also sow a seed. Help us to continue doing what we do so that lives can be changed. Thank you for tuning in to Ask the Messengers, where real people share real stories and recovery is possible.